Hi. Hi. You're listening to Cultivate Curiosity, a podcast that inspires the next generation to stay curious. Cultivate Curiosity is brought to you by the Emerald Coast Science Center, a nonprofit interactive science museum and STEAM educational facility in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. This podcast is perfect for anyone curious about the world we live in because you never know what we'll talk about next. Hi, everyone. I'm JC, the social media coordinator at the Science Center. Hi, I'm Diane, the director. And hi, I'm Harley. I'm the Community Affairs Coordinator and Educator at the Science Center. And today's episode is all going to be all about pie-in-the-sky dreams we have for the Science Center. So who wants to start? Lots of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so many, so many. Um, so shall we go in what's coming up next? What do we think the most attainable is? If you're looking at your calendar... Mm. Um, I know I think probably the first thing that's going to be coming up is um, the soft launch of our new uh, soundscape Mm -hmm. yeah, experience. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be in February. um, At our members only event. Yes, members only in February and then to the general public in March. March. Yep. So soundscape is going to be a program that we offer in our mobile planetarium. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, the planetarium people probably know more about it than I do. Yeah, I know but it's going to be covering basically like the sounds of the world. It's going to be about, I think, 30 to 45 minutes showings, kind of like our planetarium usually is. Um, but it's really cool because Soundscape is actually putting together the script for it and like it has a video elements, lots of really cool stuff that's just going to be all about sounds in our world. And energy, and the energy behind sound. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a, actually, it's an IMAX theater movie mm-hmm. is what it is. And um, we just purchased a licensing agreement for it for the next three years. Um, and we did that about a month ago. So right now we're in the stages of trying to get it um, in the right format to be mm-hmm. shown inside the planetarium dome. Getting the speakers so that we can hear it really well. The uh, nice and surround sound. Uh-huh. And there's, I think, seven or eight clips, um, video clips, but then there's opportunities in between the clips for some interactive um, discussions, discussions mm-hmm. with the educator and the audience. So we're really excited about it. It's the first time we've ever done anything in our planetarium dome that has not been planetarium show Mm -hmm. so if this all goes well then you know this hopefully might be the first of several other types of programs that we offer inside the dome when they Mm -hmm. were working on it i went in there and i think callie and maddie had like the sahara up Mm -hmm. and so it was kind of diving into like wildlife there Mm -hmm. and i just like laid on the ground and they played it and it was like so like immersive Mm -hmm. it was really cool and we didn't even have the cool speakers of that yeah so i think even with the speakers you'll really be able to hear the different sounds that the video is trying to um portray and hear them at different moments too Mm -hmm. so that'll be really cool but yeah that's coming up soon yeah and like the like the planetarium it's uh 180 degrees so Mm -hmm. we have been able to get the video so you're surrounded so Mm -hmm. it is completely immersive and the interesting thing about that was there was a session at um ASTC conference this year talking about immersive experiences Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how they're becoming um, like the new trend in museums so they call it like a black box room where you have this immersive experience Mm -hmm. um, in this space and I tried to think about you know what do we have here that would be considered an immersive experience Um, and I think definitely the small lab slash side pad is Mm -hmm. an immersive experience Mm -hmm. even something like the voting exhibit is an immersive experience because you're inside of that little place that uh, bubble that feels yeah. like you're you know on, on the, the ocean the pool mm-hmm. forest but yeah the <laughs> forest or, or ocean pool little ocean that's an immersive could immersive almost experience. put some music at, or audio back there that sounds oh, like we're yeah, in it some, some corals popping yeah like they do Ooh, that would, nice. you'd be like sure. in the water yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, i think that this this uh, planetarium and the new movie and the licensing agreement we have gives us another opportunity to offer some other types of immersive experiences mm-hmm. in the future. So we're very, very excited about and that. that. What are we going to eventually do that for like the schools and stuff like that too? You absolutely, think absolutely. For them? As soon as we can get everything nailed down, it will be a program that we'll be offering as an outreach any any place we can take the planetarium. Um, well, we can tie it into their like energy type standards mm-hmm. that they have and talking about sound energy. 
Yeah, so you could potentially go more than once to a school and for the actual planetarium yeah. space show and then yeah. soundscape. So if you're a member, February 27th, come yes. to that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get to see the first live showing the of it. The first time, yeah. 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 Um, the other thing we're hopefully going to be working on, I guess, maybe looking to aim towards March or April mm -hmm. is to host a homeschool science fair. So one of the homeschool parents brought it up to me um, that she thought that it would be awesome and that she would help us kind of put it all together and who doesn't love free help. So we're going to chat with her and kind of see what we can do about getting a homeschool science fair together, figuring out judges, figuring out age range, figuring out costs, all that fun stuff. But um, I don't think they really have any sort of thing like that in the area. So if we can host something like that, get more homeschool kids in here, then I think that would be a really fun idea and event. To mm -hmm. And it'll be for both our homeschool people and then just anyone. Anybody, it doesn't have to be anyone that's, that's yep. come here or anything. Mm -hmm. Depending on the age range, which we haven't decided yet. But mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that'll be fun. That'll be able to have the science fair. Because that was something like in middle school and even high school that I did. And, mm -hmm. You know, and got you to. Setting, though, yeah, right? exactly. Kind of do that because they host those for public schools mm -hmm. and I guess private schools too. But it's not really it's up anything to the for. Parents, yeah. You know, or the people in the community to help host one mm -hmm. for them. So. Well, I think science too is one of those um, topics that's harder for maybe homeschool families to do as immersively as you might get in a public school setting because they mm -hmm. just don't have the equipment. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they don't have access to the materials and supplies that yeah. a place like we have or a place like a public school has. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think any time that we can offer um, science in a way that is um, available to them, and, mm -hmm. and you know, we can even, as we talk about creating the homeschool science fair program, if they need to come here and work on their experiments or something mm -hmm. like that, offer that opportunity as well. Yeah, yeah. or like rent out equipment that they have mm -hmm. to bring back mm -hmm. or something if they're going to need a couple weeks to oh, use yeah. it. Absolutely. Yeah, like a, do they need a microscope for a yeah. week or something to yeah, help with their... <laughs> yeah, do they need test tubes or, uh, you know, who knows what they would... Do they want to base their science fair projects like off of something here? Yeah. Oh, do they want to make a new exhibit as part of their school? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be something really fun to explore. Uh, um, I think the next one, if we're going in order, would be My Chemical Cocktail. Yes. yes. We did this as a fundraiser. Gosh, Jesse, were you here? Was it 2016 we did this? I, I, yes, we did it 2016. I didn't go, and then I think... We tried 2017, but yes. it didn't work out very well. Right. So we did it 2016, and then it was a cocktail competition. Um, we did it at the what was then the Ramada. It's now mm -hmm. um, the Island Hotel. And um, we had a, like three or four different bars that made some sort of like cool, you know, density-based or dry mm -hmm. ice or some sort of kind of cool, fun um, cocktail. And we had a great time. We thought it was a great event. Um, we tried to do it again the next year, we just couldn't get enough traction to move forward with it. Mm -hmm. But um, we are looking to develop our own branded fundraiser that, you know, is an event that we do every single year that is associated with us. And the My Chemical mm -hmm. Cocktail is kind of fun because it's also sort of speaks to our mission, you know, mm -hmm. and the street part of it. And yeah. kind of, you know, um, and we're very excited this year to relaunch that, and that date is May 13th, which is, I think, International Cocktail Day. Mm -hmm. I think, I think so. that's what it is. It's yeah. tied in somehow. Yeah, so go ahead and mark your calendars. It should be really fun. I have mm -hmm. no idea what it's going to look like, where it's going to be, or <laughs> anything yet. So the pie is in the sky. Yes. yes. There you go. <laughs> And so that'll hopefully be an annual thing we do to mm -hmm. raise funds for like new exhibits or just anything we're thinking about that year, possibly like to implement in the summer or the fall time. Right. So timing wise, it's really good to maybe get in some new uh, program equipment for the summer, for summer camps, or maybe even depending on the money it's raised, get a new exhibit for the fall for when the school field trips come back. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's sort of our thinking behind 
and the timing of that and what those funds might be used for. So I'm really excited about that. We haven't done something like that in a number of years. Mm -hmm. Speaking of fundraising goals, do you want to talk about the planetarium building? Oh, that's such a big one. <laughs> so this is our probably biggest pie in the sky dream. And it sort of just goes back to what we were talking about with the soundscapes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we offer our planetarium shows once or twice a month, depending on what time of year it is. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to be able to do that in-house, we have to do it after hours because we have to push exhibits out of the way in the main gallery space. And our ceiling is only 10 feet tall. Well, we got a brand new planetarium in, um, earlier this year, and the brand new dome needs a 13.5 foot ceiling. So we can't even use the brand new dome right now. We're using the old dome. And even the old dome that we have is squished mm -hmm. in the 10 foot ceiling. Um, so our, our biggest pie in the sky dream is to have an additional multi purpose building. Mm -hmm in the backyard and have a 14 foot ceiling have it be large enough to where we could inflate the planetarium dome completely and fully mm -hmm. and then also we could run that program anytime mm -hmm. so if there's a class that comes on a field trip here and they for their field trip lesson they want to do a planetarium lesson or they want to do soundscapes mm -hmm. it's like an energy lesson um, we could do that because it would be in its own place in its own space. Mm -hmm. Same holds true for the summertime guests mm -hmm. or even Saturday guests that come in or any time, you know, we could constantly um, have that as a, a completely added exhibit. Mm -hmm. We can also still take it out into the community like we currently do. Um, you know, we take it to schools. We talked about a martial arts program. Mm -hmm. and they have the big places that we take the planetariums to, and their, their ceilings are so high we could completely inflate the dome there. But we can't even do it in house, and it's yeah. such a great program and such a unique, wonderful, sticky kind of a way to talk about, um, you know, space mm -hmm. to talk about the soundscapes um, program. And we can't even utilize it as much as we could. And that just is heartbreaking. Um, so we are trying to, when we get back from the Christmas break, and going to really sit down and start putting together quotes to figure out, you know, what would something like this cost? Who might be community partners that would be willing to cut us a deal on pieces and parts of it? And, um, maybe even sponsors. Or something. Maybe sponsors. There's always naming rights for something like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Your name on the building. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but but if you think about it, we are trying to we're currently trying to raise the Artemis generation, mm -hmm. and you know we're in this process right now. Um, you know they just had their first rocket go up and come back successfully, um, and these are the kids that need to be exposed to the type of programs that we run in the planetarium. Mm -hmm. These are the kids that could go to Mars or beyond. Or these are the kids that could create a spacecraft that lands on a meteor and collects um, rare earth elements that we need to power the next you know, new energy or the next mm -hmm. new technology or mm -hmm. something like that. And the planetarium is such a great way to be able to expose kids to this. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like looking at the planets. I mean, we can talk about so many different topics inside of the planetarium. The great thing about the planetarium is if you've never been to a planetarium show is that it's all educator driven. So it's not something that we just plug in and you just listen to some recorded voice. Mm -hmm. It's completely interactive. It's a conversation that you have between the educator and the audience. Um, so every show is a little bit different depending on what the questions are that are generated inside of the planetarium. We do all sorts of specialty shows. We do the Sorted Secret shows, which are for 21 and over, um, because we talk about the, the stories behind the constellations. And if you're talking about myths and legends and Jupiter and Zeus, they are not really the genie stories. Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, we do special shows where we talk about the different cultures in the night sky. You know, touching on some of those like, same things, the Greek and Roman legends, but also not getting too too raunchy mm -hmm. or saucy. Yeah, <laughs> different so, cultures look at the 
constellations differently. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of really cool stories behind each of those cultures and their stories. Well, I think so much of our cultural history, our cultural literacy is based on those myths and and stories that were first put into the night sky. And I think it's incredible if you think about some shepherd 2,000 years ago in Greece that looked at the night sky and we're still telling the same stories that he learned. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like a, just like this, there's a through line, you know, mm-hmm. that directly connects us to every single culture that's been on the planet because we're still looking at the night sky and we're still telling the same stories mm-hmm. that they still told. I think that's incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why the whole planetarium thing is just so important to me because we don't have the opportunity to use it enough in the current building mm-hmm. formula that we have. Um, I think it would bring something completely unique to our area, completely um, so much needed. Um, mm-hmm. You know, again, we're talking about inspiring the Artemis generation um, and all of the things that we're talking about going to space and putting them to space. Well, you have to have a really good understanding of space and how do we um, inspire and engage kids in that. I think the planetarium is just like, you know, a great gateway to the whole um, idea of space exploration, you know, for these kids in our area. And having another additional building to add to our square footage is always beneficial. Oh yeah, yeah. And we, our, our, our goal is to to create the building, and I think, you know, realistically, we're probably looking at a metal building. Um, and you know, we'd have a concrete slab. We'd like to rough in the plumbing. So that we could create a, a nice bathroom in there. Mm-hmm. We also would like to have laundry washer and dryer. <laughs> we'll washer and dryer because we rotate taking home all the animal bedding and mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. stuff like that every so often. Um, so that would be really nice to have. Um, you know, if it's got a nice tall ceiling, later on we might be able to put a little bit of a loft in there with some storage space, which is something is. Uh, very lacking here mm-hmm. as, as it is um so yeah I, it's 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 something that would just really uh, again be one of those um transformative things for the science center but not just for the science center but for the community at large because mm-hmm. there's nothing else like that nobody else is offering that mm-hmm. and we have the capabilities to do it we just can't do it enough mm-hmm. so we need um, that building I know. That's my dream. <laughs> <laughs> I just need like, you know, I don't know, like maybe $150,000. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> it doesn't have to all come from the same place, right? Yes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot of moving pieces. It's a lot of parts. Um, but that's, that's going to be our focus um, to really be able to get that together so that we can take our, our ourselves to the next level, but also to our community as well. Mm-hmm. That's my big pie in the sky. <laughs> Carly, you got something? What's your pie in the sky? Mm, you know, not a tons of pies are in the sky for me, for here. I think there's little ones that kind of float up and then they come back down and get eaten and then they go back up again. Some other <laughs> ones. Um, the one I want to finish working on, hopefully next week, is a nature weave exhibit out in the backyard. Just something else to add out yeah. there, something new for people to see. Um, Diane and I went to the ASTC um, conference and saw lots of cool things. We were taking lots of pictures for lots of ideas, and this was one that we saw um, at one of their museums. And they essentially just had a huge loom that was like six feet by ten feet, and you could come up and just weave different pieces of nature into it. Um, and we have an amphitheater out back that would be the perfect place for that. So me and some two of our volunteers, Hank and Ted, again, <laughs> are working on that. So hopefully by the end of December, January, it'll mm-hmm. be all done and ready to go out there and be in the weed. We're calling it the wild weed. <laughs> and I know what JC's pie in the sky is. Yes. She's been <laughs> working on diligently over the past couple of weeks yes. getting clothes and comparing options. Uh huh. So hopefully by now it will already be a thing. But uh, I am looking into digital membership cards in December, just because it's something that gives us a little edge tech wise. And then also for all of our members, it'll be on your phone. You don't have to get a card printed. And also 
with it being integrated with Salesforce, it'll be automatically updated. So as soon as you renew your membership, it'll show that on your card once you like refresh it or the, the same day, basically. And, and it's also more environmentally friendly. Exactly. You're not constantly having to print out all this paper. Mm -mm. So that would be completely done with. Um, so you would just have the one I think we're going to go with either has an app or you can just have it on your Apple wallet or your Google Pay. Um, and that's how you would view it and you could show it to us and then you can also show that, that to your ASTC passport program museums which I guess we don't talk about it enough because not everyone knows about the ASTC passport program but basically there's about 300 museums worldwide that you can also go to that for the most part it's readmission for whoever is a member in your membership or it's discounted admission. I think there's Probably more of them are free admission, but we say it's either free or discounted for that. So that's something that's really awesome. And uh, we'll have that on the back of your card so you can know and look up who is a museum in there. Um, because, I mean, Diane, you've been to a couple different museums with it. Well, I, yeah, whenever we travel, I always um, use my membership card and go visit other museums. Um, but I went to Boston. My daughter was graduating from uh, her master's program at BU, and we went three of us. And it's twenty five dollars a person. Mm -hmm. And so I just showed my membership card from here, and all three of us got in for free. That was seventy five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, so that was the price of the membership here. Yeah. yeah. Here. So that's gonna be great. You guys will be able to have those cards pretty quickly. Um, It'll basically send you out one to whatever email that you have on uh, Salesforce and it'll just go to you and you can use it for ever. Basically, it'll automatically renew and everything. So that'll be great. It'll take a little bit off of my plate mm -hmm. as well, which will well, be I nice. Too, there's, there's sometimes we get returns because maybe the address wasn't in the, you know, usually the email address is always correct. Yes. Sometimes the mailing address um, isn't correct or people have moved or something has happened. And mm -hmm. so. I mean, because we'll get some of them back in the mail, gosh, yeah. a couple times a mm -hmm. month sometimes. And we were times. having those issues, too, with printing them. Sometimes once it goes through the mail, you know, sometimes mail is squished and compressed, and unfortunately the entire card won't say anything anymore about you because the ink has came off of it. Mm -hmm. um, so this will limit that, uh, any issues with that, and then be eco-friendly, like Harley said, too. So well, that's great. From a, from a cost perspective, looking at, you know, of course, you have to pay these organizations that run the, um, the digital membership cards, mm -hmm. but it's, the cost is equal to, to what doing exactly, you know, yeah. purchasing and mailing and, and the time that it takes to put all of the membership packages together. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, it's going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about that and, and, and looking forward to it. We didn't talk about the murals. Okay. Oh, so, that's right. Oh, so yes. uh, Sebastian and Wolfgang, which if you don't know, Wolfgang is our new tortoise. That's the neighbor to Sebastian. Um, so by this time, we probably are close to figuring out who the artists are going to be for it. Um, and so we are going to have two murals, one on each of their houses that are going to be musical themed because they're named after musicians. And so uh, we're going to see what people start submitting in. We have one submission so far, but we're hoping for a couple more just to see who would want to paint a mural for Sebastian and Wolfgang. So. There's also some funding um, through a cultural arts league that is going to allow us to put some murals on the outside of the building mm -hmm. as well. Um, and that funding is available now. Um, it's just a on us to get everything figured out figured out <laughs> and the, the spaces on the wall pressure wash and mm -hmm. lined and things like that so um, hopefully we'll get those done in the near near term future mm -hmm. and have some really really cool murals on the outside of the building in the yard area mm -hmm. um, so that's another big goal that we have this year yeah I think Sebastian and Wolfgangs are kind of like a They're just tester. a tester to see <laughs> who's gonna yeah be interested in painting for mm -hmm. us because yeah they the artists will be paid through that um, mm -hmm. money so that way you guys will get something as well and everyone will get to see your art when they come to the science center too kind of to go off of the painting too we 
are still hoping to finish painting the building, updating mm -hmm. some painting on our like roundabout right here in the front of the center. So if you're looking for any ways to like help us achieve those goals, volunteering to help us paint, pressure wash, do all that stuff is always helpful. It's cold right now, so mm -hmm. it might be a little bit better to do it now than, than when it's hot. When it's hot. <laughs> um, so if you have some free time, that's always helpful, painting. Yes. Oh, and we just we just got a great brand new pressure washer. I'm <laughs> so excited about this pressure washer, um, three thousand psi. So I right, say three thousand dollars. No, I was like, no. <laughs> okay, I waited Black Friday sale. Yes, so I've been very very excited about the new pressure washer because one of the things that we saw in Pittsburgh was this really cool sidewalk painting. I just thought of another pie, and so. <laughs> So we, we saw that they were really, really cool, and they had these like little affirmations. Um, they were just funky mm -hmm. designs, basically, on the sidewalk outside of the um, Children's Museum of Pittsburgh. And they love Mr. Rogers, because Mr. Rogers was from Pittsburgh. So they're all really kind, sweet little things incorporated into these really cool, artsy um, backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we definitely took a ton of pictures of those, and we would like to also bring that here. I think that's pretty attainable. Yeah, I think it's just a pressure wash and to find somebody that's willing to probably us. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, it's not super artistic, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. We might actually be able to do our. The ideas are in the brain, but the execution is not always what I picture. Yeah, I mean, if I'm doing it, but if someone else does it, it's great. Right. Sometimes collectively, it's sometimes they yeah. be better than what. That's I true. That's true. Do. So, one of the other pies I just thought of was the one we saw in Pittsburgh. Um, and that was the cryptid creature wall. Yes. Uh -huh. So we have our one cryptid outside, your favorite, the skull game. The skull yep. game. <laughs> um, so we want to kind of do a couple more, um, but also tie them maybe into cryptid creatures within our area. Mm -hmm. um, so like a sea monster, so to say, but we're hoping to kind of make that like a little scavenger hunt. So we would have those cryptid creatures out and outside, maybe even some inside, not sure yet. Um, and you could kind of go find those cryptids and kind of read a little bit about them. But that was what we saw that we really just were like, oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> well, we're already think, started. <laughs> yes. Well, I think the great thing about it is when, you know, when Harley and I come back from something like this and we have like a bazillion ideas and so many pictures on our phones, um, <laughs> But, you know, we sort of filter through what, what can we do ourselves in-house, um, you know, what would we have to find an outside partner or outside funding to help us do. But I think we sit down together as a team, and how big is our staff now, 12, 13? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a little bit bigger than that now, maybe like I think 14, 15. 15. Yeah. Okay, so we'll all sit so down big. together, <laughs> and then Harley and I will do this brain dump, and somebody goes, oh, that sounds really cool, and we're like, all right, there you go. That's you get to do it. <laughs> you think the cryptids is cool? Oh, well, girl, there you go. That's mm -hmm. your project. Um, but I think that that's great because then that sort of takes the pressure off of Harley and I for trying to execute mm -hmm. the project. But then also it brings like an entirely new set of eyes and a new set of fresh ideas mm -hmm. to help, you know, create and implement it. And then it's not just one person's vision when you walk in here. It's like 15 people's vision, mm -hmm. and not even, it's more than that, because everybody that's worked here mm -hmm. over, has done something, at least. The, the history has left something, has created something, whether it was a program, or a lesson, or an exhibit, mm -hmm. or a work of art, or, you know, everybody has left an idea here that will just, you know, continue to engage and inspire you know, science learners for as long as we're still here. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's probably one of the other really unique and cool things about us is, you know, relative to some other museums that you, what I'm going to use the word corporate feel, mm -hmm. but, but it's the same exhibit. Like if you, if you, there's like, there's very few exhibit makers for science museum mm -hmm. exhibits and they are all, like you probably can't, $15,000 is about the bottom the mm -hmm. cheapest thing you can get in a science museum. Um, so you will see a lot of the same exhibits everywhere. If you mm -hmm. travel, go to different museums, you'll see, we see the same exhibits. Um, but I think if you come here, you will may see some of them, but they'll look a little bit different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they were made in-house. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's the other thing, is that you see the 
personality of the person whose idea it was or who mm -hmm. created it um, that will come through. And so, you know, I, you know, I'm just looking at you, JC, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about um, the footprints mm -hmm. and, that me and Kelly did. Yeah, yeah. That me and Kelly did in the animal room. And so we were just like, what could we add to the animal room that mm -hmm. would be kind of fun and funky? And oh, let's put footprints in. Here. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're on our second iteration of them because yes. they got worn down yes. so quickly. But um, but you know, it's I just, think we did. I think they look a little bit better this time well, around too. The, the, wording the wording, yeah, we changed the font so people and yeah. made them bigger so you can see them. <laughs> but the amount of people that see those, even on mm -hmm. field trips. Last week when I was doing the animal field trip, this that station, all the kids were like, asked me if the bearded dragon footprint was down there. Oh. Because <laughs> I had it in my hand. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't think it is no. actually, but now we should probably add it. Yeah. So walking, but it was really cute because they were asking me about her toes and why yeah. her toes were so long and her nails and all that. And then they're like, is it down there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they, they love it. Mm -hmm. All the kids look at it and just want their footprints there. Yeah. Well, they are. We have the human male and female oh, at the beginning true. and the end. Yeah, so. that's true. I've, I've seen people walk through there and specifically put their foot, like, right on top. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> the male and the female mm -hmm. uh, human footprints in there. So, yeah. Uh, I think that's all of our pie in the skies. Um, real quick, a couple ways that you can help us achieve our goals is, as Harley mentioned, become a volunteer. We got group volunteering or individual group volunteering as well. To do that, email volunteer at ecscience.org. Yes. And I'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> you can also become a member here at the Science Center. And we just talked about the amazing ASTC program that you'll be a part of. And you can do that by either coming in and purchasing one or going to our website, ecscience.org slash membership. And you can do it that way. Or if you want to be a sponsor or you know, a donor or something like that. We got events, programs, and even our animal ambassadors that you can sponsor as well. Um, and next episode, we're actually going to be talking all about our animal ambassadors. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for some fun animal stories. Yes. <laughs> and how many times have I gotten peed on? Or pooped on. Or pooped on. <laughs> yeah, that's the all right, so we'll see you guys next episode. Bye. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Cultivate Curiosity. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at socialmedia at ecscience.org. Tune in for our next episode in two weeks.